हे फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द यूट्यूब चैनल ऑल अबाउट इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स सो इन दिस क्वेश्चन वी बिन गिवन दिस सिक्वेंशियल सर्किट एंड हियर वी बिन गिवन दैट द प्रोपोकेशन डेले ऑफ दिस एंड गेट इन द गिवन सर्किट इज इक्वल टू वन एनो सेकेंड मोर ओवर हियर द प्रोपोकेशन डेले ऑफ द फ्लिप फ्लॉप और दिस क्लॉक टू क्यू डिले इज ऑल्सो इक्वल टू टू नैनो सेकेंड एंड मोर ओवर हियर वी बिन ऑल्सो गिवन द सेटअप टाइम फॉर द इच फ्लिप फ्लॉप दैट इज ऑल्सो इक्वल टू टू नैनो सेकेंड सो हियर फॉर द गिवन सिक्वेंशियल सर्किट वी बिन आज टू फाइंड द मैक्सिमम क्लॉक फ्रिक्वेंसी इन अ मेगा हर्ट्स सच दैट दैर इज अ नो सेटअप टाइम वैल्युएशन फॉर द गिवन सर्किट सो लेट एस फाइंड दैट सो हियर वी बिन गिवन दैट द प्रोपोकेशन डेल ऑफ द एंड गेट इज इक्वल टू वन नैनो सेकेंड बट द प्रोपोकेशन डेल ऑफ द इच फ्लिप फ्लॉप इज इक्वल टू टू नैनो सेकेंड मोर ओवर हियर द सेटअप टाइम ऑफ द फ्लिप फ्लॉप्स इज इक्वल टू टू नैनो सेकेंड while the whole time is equal to 0 nanosecond so as you know the setup time of the flip flop is the time duration for which the input to the flip flop should remain stable before the arrival of the clock age so here the setup time is equal to 2 nanosecond and similarly this whole time for the given flip flops is equal to 0 nanosecond so as you know the whole time is the time duration for which the input to the flip flop should remain stable after the passing of the clock age so here that time is equal to 0 nanosecond and based on these parameters we have been asked to find the maximum clock frequency for the given circuit such that there is a no setup time violation in the given circuit so here the minimum clock duration for the circuit should be such that the each flip flop in the given circuit should have the valid new input before the arrival of the new clock age and at the same time we should not also have the setup time violation so here first of all let us find the minimum required clock duration for the first flip flop so here after this first clock age the new input for the first flip flop will be generated after the propagation delay of the 2 nanosecond that is the propagation delay of this second flip flop plus the propagation delay of this and gate that is equal to 1 nanosecond that means after this clock age the new valid input to the first flip flop will be available after the 3 nanosecond and once that is available then it should remain stable for the setup time so in this case that is equal to 2 nanosecond that means here for this first flip flop the minimum clock duration is equal to the propagation delay of the flip flop plus the propagation delay of this and gate plus the setup time of this flip flop so that is equal to 2 nanosecond plus 1 nanosecond plus 2 nanosecond that is equal to 5 nanosecond that means the next clock age for this first flip flop should come after this 5 nanosecond or we can say that for this first flip flop the minimum required clock duration is equal to 5 nanosecond so similarly now let us find the minimum required clock duration for this second flip flop so for this second flip flop the new clock pulse will get generated after the propagation delay of this first flip flop so here we are assuming that before the arrival of this first clock age the new valid input is already available to this first flip flop that means after the first clock age this first flip flop will generate its valid output after the 2 nanosecond that is the propagation delay of this flip flop that means here the output of this first flip flop will act as a input for this second flip flop and once that is available then it should remain stable for the setup time of the flip flop so in this case that is equal to 2 nanosecond so we can say that for the second flip flop the minimum required clock duration is equal to the propagation delay of the flip flop that is tpd plus the setup time of the flip flop that is equal to t setup so in this case that is equal to 2 nanosecond plus 2 nanosecond that is equal to 4 nanosecond that means if we just consider the second flip flop then here the minimum required clock duration is equal to 4 nanosecond so after this duration only the next clock age should come to the second flip flop so in this way for the first flip flop the minimum required clock duration or this t clock minimum is equal to 5 nanosecond while for the second flip flop the minimum required clock duration is equal to 4 nanosecond so here for the given sequential circuit 
we should consider the worst case scenario. So in this case, that is equal to 5 nanosecond. Because here, suppose if we select the T-clock minimum as the 4 nanosecond, then we will have the set a time violation for the first flip-flop. That means here, to avoid that, we should consider the worst case. So we can say that for the given sequential circuit, the minimum required clock duration is equal to 5 nanosecond. So if we keep this clock duration, then we will not have the setup time violation. Or we can say that for the given sequential circuit, the maximum clock frequency is equal to 1 divided by T clock. That is equal to 1 divided by 5 nanosecond. And that is equal to 200 megahertz. That means here, for the given sequential circuit, the maximum allowable clock frequency is equal to 200 megahertz. And therefore, for the given question, the answer is equal to 200 megahertz.